Example 180. Is the color of the motorcycle helmet used by riders somehow related to the risk of crash-related injuries? Use the data below to test the claim at the 5% significance level that the colors of motorcycle helmets are independent of crash injuries. So it's clear based on this phrase here, test the claim, that we're doing a hypothesis test. And since they're asking us to, to see if two categories are independent, it's the chi-squared test for independence. So I'm going to express the two hypotheses that are standard with the chi-squared test of independence. The first one, the null hypothesis, always says the two categories are independent. So I've said helmet color is independent of in injury. And then versus the alternative, which is helmet color and injury are dependent, or in other words, related in some way. Okay, so from there, our next step is usually to get the data worked out. And what we mean by data in a chi-squared test is to come up with the expected values, right? So we're going to do that as our next step, the data step. And to do the expected values, we just go one by one for each cell, and we try to figure out those expectations. So let's do the expected value for the cell in the first row, first column. And remember the formula for this is basically the row total, right? Divide or times the column total and then divide it by the grand total, the grand total. Okay, so the row total for the first row, because that one there indicates the first row, is 899. And then that'll be multiplied by the column total. The column total for the first column is 704. Divided by the grand total, the grand total is 1,232. All right, let's see what that gives us overall. So approximately that'll give us 899 times 704 divided by 1232. Two. And when you're done, you get 513.71 if you round off to two decimal places. Okay, so let's put that number in our table now where it belongs. So it'll be 513.71. So I've just penciled it in on underneath the position there of the observed value. That way we can see it for later. All right, let's do the next cell right next to it. What is the location there? Well, it's in the first row, so we'll put a one for the row, but it's in the second column, so we'll put two for the column. And then we'll follow the formula, row total, column total, grand total. Well, the first row's total is again 899 times the column total for the second column, that's 489, divided by the grand total of 1,232. What's that approximately? Well, let's see. We will have 899 times 489 divided by 1,232. And when we do that, we get 356.83. 356.83. And if I put that into our table, let's see where that would go. It goes right here, right? So 356.83. Okay, so we got the second position filled in. Now I'm going to fill in these other two or three here in a row because I know them already and it's just going to be time consuming to work them all out. And I think you've got the hang of it now at this point. The remaining values here after that, the first row, third column gives us 20. 8.46 and then this position here gives us 190.29 you can do that and check it on your own and then the next position is 132.17 I'm gonna do this last cell with you just for good measure here so we have kind of the traditional thing we do the first two and then the last one just for good check so let's do that one what is the name of that last position well it's in the second row and it's in the third column, right? Okay, and then that'll be the row total for the second row, which is 333 times the column total. That'll be 39 for that third column. And then divided by the grand total, one, two, three, two. All right, what does that give us approximately? Well, let's work it out. It'll be 333 times 39 divided by 1,232. And when you're done with that, you get approximately 10.54, right? 10.54 to two places, and that's what I'll put in that last position there, 10.54. Okay, so there you have all your expected values filled in now. <clears throat> Our next step then is to do the test step. 
So recall that the test stat, when you work it out, is essentially a chi-squared test statistic, and it has that familiar pattern that we've been using, which is the observed, observed value, pardon me, or the observation minus the expected value squared divided by the expected value. And we'll sum up all the different cells here. So let's do a few of these written out, and then I'll just give you the overall answer when we're done. So for the first cell, it'll be the observed value of 491 minus the expected value of 513.71 quantity squared divided by 513.71. Then you're going to add to that in the next cell, which will be 377 minus 356.83. You'll square that difference and then divide it by 356.83. Plus, then you would do the next cell, the next one, the next one, all the way until you got to the last one. The last one would be 8 minus 10.54 squared over 10.54. And when you were done with all of that and worked it all out completely, you would end up with a result of 8.775. So that is your chi-squared test stat. That's the chi-squared test stat for this particular problem. Okay, good. Now from there we're going to get the critical value. And you know how you would do the critical value. We draw the curve as a visual aid and we find the start of the rejection region. So let's draw the curve just as a visual aid here. And we're going to put the shaded tail on the right hand side like we always do, starting off at zero. We want to know what critical value belongs right here. To do that critical value, we need to have the appropriate structure. We need to have alpha. The alpha is 5% in this problem, so I'll use 0 0.05. And then we need the degrees of freedom here. Now, the degrees of freedom is very simple. It's the number of rows minus 1. So there are two rows. If you take away 1, that gives you 1, times the number of columns minus 1. There are three columns. Minus 1 gives you 2. And that will give you your degrees of freedom when you multiply those two values. So our Chi-squared critical value is going to be in the 0 0.05 column with two degrees of freedom. Let's go to the table and see what that gives us. These are on our chi-squared table. We need to look up 0 0.05 with two degrees of freedom. We don't have 0 0.05 on this first page, so we're going to turn over to the second page of the table. And when we look at that, we see that for 0 0.05, two degrees of freedom, we find 5.99147. 5.99147. Okay, after going to the table, we found the value 5.99147. And when we compare that against our chi-squared test stat, you see that our test stat clearly lands in the rejection region. So we'll say here, based on that, that we should reject the null hypothesis. So we reject the idea of independence, and we support the idea that these two things are dependent. So what are we saying here? We're saying that somehow the color of the helmet is related to your risk of injury when riding a motorcycle. And I think, I guess, if we wanted to speculate on what that relationship is, we could say, well, it's probably due to the fact that bright colored helmets are easier to see, and the motorcycle rider, therefore, is more visible and less likely to be hit by a car or something like that. That's basically the idea of the problem.